the thinking processes that we have and the attitude also that we have within us can affect us deeply and go a great way in deciding our state of mind. A wrong way of thinking or a wrong attitude can bring us pain even when it is really not necessary to have pain. And the right way of thinking can give us peace and clarity. It can give us clarity in a moment where we learn and understand what the situation is. And by having that clarity, we can have the freedom to choose the state of mind we wish to have. When I say freedom to choose the state of mind, we should know that it's the, the most desirable state of mind is to have a mind that is generally peaceful, stable and has clarity. Now, there are going to be disturbances without doubt from the external circumstances or the circumstances that we are in. And there is always going to be an imbalance created. But the rooting that we need to have or the kind of state of mind that we should tell ourselves that is most desirable for us is a state of peace and clarity. These states can be disturbed by two factors. So here is where I wanted to talk about mindfulness. Mindfulness is not about just being in the moment. Mindfulness is also being aware of what disturbs our state of mind. In analyzing it, we should understand that there could be, there are two factors that disturb this. An external factor and an internal factor. The external factor is the situations outside, people, behavior, attitudes that when taken inside tend to cause a sort of imbalance and then it incites a sense of response that again ignites our anger, frustration or even anxiety. That is the external situation that comes from outside to inside. Then we need to also be mindful if the factor is actually inside which means there's really not much disturbance outside and the situation really does not need to evoke a sense of frustration or anger from me. But inside me, there is a disharmony. There is uh, uh, an off sync in my energies and that is provoking me to have a response that is undesirable. We need to clearly understand these two distinctions because when we mix them up and we are not sure about it, then more than just dealing with the situation, we are also dealing with the confusion that is happening within us. And this confusion can add up to our responses. It can add up to our frustration. It can add up to our anger. So it's justified that we are frustrated or angry, but it can help us a great deal if we understand what really is the cause. When there's an external cause, we learn to respond in a particular way. And there's a whole science behind that. When there's an internal problem or when there's an internal dysfunction, again, we can learn through meditation and mindfulness as to how to deal with that. Maybe at certain times, silence is the best option. So we learn to keep it within ourselves and we learn to probably even even if we respond in an angry way or in a frustrated way, we are not bound by our egotism to hold it very tight within us. We can salvage the situation and bring it under control by actually expressing to somebody uh, a sense of regret by saying that we are sorry for what has happened because there has been, I have not been in my best states. So we can actually harmonize and balance situations to a great deal by understanding these two distinctions. The distinction that the fact is my mind's disturbed from an outside force and the distinction that my mind is actually disturbed by my internal force. Sometimes on a bad day, both can come together. 
the external situation might be equally responsible and the internal internal situation might also be provoked or might also be in disharmony when there is an external uh, cause then the best way to deal with that is to understand and reason in dealing with the situation when there's in when there's an internal cause the best way is to find ways and means to calm ourselves down and even if we can't calm it down we can express a sense of regret and we can salvage and bring the situation under control that again is a different way and there are many ways to deal with that and that it depends on a particular situation but understanding these two distinctions is of a great help to our own mental clarity and it also helps us in bringing the situation back to normal as soon as possible and eventually the situation or the state what we say of bringing back to normal is that state of peace clarity and stability so mindfulness is also about understanding what really causes us this disturbance and the right thinking the right attitude that we have is also very very important so first we understand what really is the problem and then the right thinking the right attitude that we have towards that situation after the disturbance has been occurred is the next thing in bringing about a state of peace clarity and stability in our minds thank you for listening thank you